Oh, hi. Um, today is going to be the day that I review chapter five. And this is going to be totally serious. Not, no fun and games here. All right. But, um, this, okay, this chapter was just kind of, okay, look, I understand it's probably important. That there was one badass moment in this chapter, but the first beginning half, I just want to slap the author in the face, but I'll get into it. Don't, don't worry. I want you to just calm down. All right. So let's get into this. Um, so we first start off the chapter with Katniss getting her <clears throat> hair waxed. Um, and, uh, basically they're just getting style, you know, getting ready for the Hunger Games or getting dressed and then they make a pretty awesome appearance. That's basically all that happens, but let's talk about this. Um, okay, so that, that's the quick, uh, you know, the recap. So let's get into Katniss and let's get into, uh, her underwear um so we learned that uh, Katniss is quite the quite the bear. She's got a lot of hair down there. Um I was pretty scared. Okay, I'm going to stop that. Okay, um but seriously, the reason why I don't understand the author is that she was like, yeah, um they shaved everything, my arms, my legs, my armpits, my whatever. The sh- completely missing the most important thing you would have to shave and that's her vagina they don't mention her vagina at all they're just like oh yeah eyebrows and uh, my torso um uh yeah you know what about your vagina huh i y'all I didn't do that i mean come on we all know that she's gonna fucking get pounded by Peta. you might as well you know do him a favor you know and just take away the bush but anyway, I just thought that was funny. That that's the one thing she left out. All my hair is plucked off my body, and she lists all the things except for you know down there. And I'm pretty sure she has some. She's 16. All right. I'm sorry. I'm not a pedophile. On the weekends. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so anyway, I, uh, I guess uh, these stylists are pretty funny. They uh, they dress Katniss up until she's fabulous. And um, I think that her outfit, I've seen pictures on Google. And I think I had it in a slideshow a while back. I'll try and put it up on the video. But it's pretty badass. Her costume is black. And it's she has leather boots. And she has like a fire-colored cape. And I, I don't even want to get into how... Okay, I'll get into that later. But basically, her costume it looks pretty fucking cool. And um, they actually decided to leave her hair normal... Which is cool because I guess that's the one thing that reminds her of her mom. You know, the fact that she did her hair for her. You know, she she even wishes that she brought her dress along. And I think she does secretly care for her mom. But anyway. So, um, what else about this, this glorious 16-year-old that doesn't shave her bush? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not a pedophile. I told you. Not on the weekends. Okay, so, um... So, this is what I don't understand about Katniss. All the stylists that took care of her, um, somehow she can understand their position and how their intentions are good. But she can't understand PETA. She can't, she can't accept PETA's, you know, intentions. And she can't accept her mom, you know, at all. So, I think it's hilarious how she'll side with Mage and how she'll side with stylists. You would think that she would just, I don't know, like, ugh. I just don't understand her. She's mature sometimes and immature, then she's just inconsistent. So, yeah. Um, let's go. Okay, so in this chapter, uh, Katniss and Peta get a little closer. And um, I don't like what Katniss did. I guess basically it was... Uh, see, I don't know how... I'll, I'll go ahead and explain it. So basically... Um, you know, they go out in a chariot and everything, and uh, Peta and her hold hands. Now, you know, the stylist, you know, supposedly told them to do that. But, you know, it's like, uh, you know. But it's cool, though. They actually, like, they're not just holding hands. They're actually kind of scared, and they're kind of comforting each other. I mean, she even said that he was, he and her were both holding each other's hands so tight. The blood had to, like, you know, circulate, and they had to massage their hands afterwards. That's pretty crazy, you know. And there is probably a big reason for that. Mainly because they were on fire, literally. Like, they're literally on fire. Um, but uh, I'll explain that later. 
So they're probably scared because of that and because they're on a chariot. They probably I don't know if they've ever been on one something like that before, but it was kind of cool. And um and then, you know, after they they had some all lovey doveyness, I'll talk about that but later, but um of course Katniss rejects it and she keeps thinking that he's using a strategy to get close and be nice and then um and then she says something like, oh, well, I'm going to play the same strategy. And then kisses him on the cheek. I call it the kiss of death because she's trying to kill him, basically. Um, and that, that's kind of messed up. You know, you're leading him along. Because I'm pretty sure that he genuinely likes her and genuinely is caring and, and kind. And But she just wants to fucking play with his feelings. Now, that sucks. And not only that, there's probably going to be so many freaking misunderstandings. Like, you know, they're going to, like, do something questionable or close, and she's going to play it off as, like, oh, yeah, this is just part of the strategy for me and him to cuddle. Yes, this is just part of the strategy. Yes. <laughs> That'd be funny. Um, so I could totally see that happening. And, you know, it kind of disappointed me. I used to think, I thought in my previous video that she thought that a kind cat in this, I mean, a kind PETA would be worse than an unkind one. But really, the reason why she thinks a kind... Uh, Peter would be bad is because she, you know, thinks that he would get closer to her to be nice and then kill her. So she's retarded. I'm sorry. However, she's badass. But, you know, I just don't like her retardedness. I do understand where she's coming from. It's not like she's a shitty, you know, the shittiest character of all, you know. Um. So then I learned that Katniss is, might be a nympho. And, you know, I saw this, gl a little hint of this in the chapter, in chapter f four. Yeah, chapter four. And I, I just kind of made nothing of it. I just kind of looked at the comment and was like, okay. Um, and then what it basically means is that she, uh, what she said, it was something like, you know, I hope they don't think naked is whatever, whatever. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to sleep naked. And, and then, you know, Whenever the stylist came in, he, she was like, oh, he probably just wants to see me naked. There's no reason for me to even get clothes on. I'm just going to be there naked. And so, okay, you know, I was like, all right, uh, okay. And then he goes in and he's checking her out and she decides not to cover her tits. She's like, oh, no, I'm not going to cover my tits. Um, You know, I, I'll resist that. I'll resist. Why? Why does he need to see your tits? I think she wants him to see. And then and then he's like, okay, well, I think I got a perfect style for you. Oh, he wants me to be naked, doesn't he? And he starts talking like, oh, yeah, so you, you know you guys from the coal district. Oh, he wants to cover me in coal when I'm naked. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with Katniss? You know, he, she's just like thinking about her being naked and how this guy wants to make her naked, which isn't true. I, I mean, what the fuck, Katniss? I think she's a possible nympho. And not only was she a nympho, she was freaking whoring herself to the crowd, being a little attention whore. You know, she wants to call it a strategy. I think that she's getting a little bit too into the Hunger Games and she's falling right into the capital's, you know, control. So the fact that she's all like, oh, hi sponsor me you know to me if i was in that situation i'd be fucking flicking off every single one of those motherfuckers i'd be i'd be i'd stand up in that chariot pull out my penis and p hold it and then have my other hand i flick off everybody and, I, and i'd be like yeah fuck you guys you know you can go suck a dick suck these i'd hold them if it sucked this so i would be really pissed off at the capitol for doing this shit and i and i cer certain hell was trying i'd find people to team up with and be like hey look if we can be the last people left let's just not kill each other fuck it you know what, what, what is the capital gonna do come in and kill us you know we'll, we'll kill them let's set up a fort inside the hunger games arena and let's just you know chill out there and be like hey you know we're gonna stay here you know what you guys come in here we're gonna fucking kill you how about that perfect done that's what I would do. I actually think they should do that. Hit her, Peta, that little twelve-year-old girl. She, I guarantee you know Katniss is gonna go up to her and be like, "Oh, I'll take care of you," and probably that crippled boy, and they're gonna have a little alliance, and maybe some other people. Probably that fox, fox face girl. Um. So yeah, that's what I think. What I would do anyway. Um. So anyway, I didn't like that she was being all crazy attention whore and I, it was kind of laughing because she was blowing kisses and being all like flirty with the crowd and all the guys were like trying to grab her kiss <laughs> you know i watch anime and you know i don't know if anybody's ever seen the scene from like japanese fanboys just being all like crazy over the girls i, I could just totally see that happening <laughs> it kind of made me laugh out loud um 
So it was kind of funny. And then everyone was shouting Katniss and Katniss and PETA. So I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool. It was mainly because their entrance was so fucking badass, which had to do with this an, another awesome character I learned about. But I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so what else? Um, so apparently. Katniss really does actually like the capital, and uh, not the capital, but the fashion of the capital. She actually finds it attractive, so even though she hates on it, she kind of likes it. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. She, I, I kind of read into chapter six, but I won't, I won't get into that too much. But I'll, I'll talk. But um, she kind of messes with the gadgets, and she sees how you know food gets, uh, you know, is just served on a plate instantly, and you know. She was like, you know, what would I have to do to make this? You know, I would have to, you know, I'd have to kill this turkey. I'd have to sell a turkey for this. I'd have to grow these in my yard. I'd have to get the goat milk. And and she was like, you know, it'd probably take me like, you know, probably like a week to prepare all this food. And it, it wouldn't be as good. And then she was like, you know, what do people even do with their day? What do they even do? They they probably... See, I can't remember if this was in Chapter 5 or Chapter 6 because I read a little bit into Chapter 6. But if it is, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Um... So, yeah, that's kind of interesting if you think about it, how Katniss, you know, w- uh, was making that analogy. And I thought that was pretty cool, you know, like a lot of us, you know, th- for her, she's thinking, oh, yeah, you know, my whole day consists of getting food, and that's all she thinks about. But for us, it's like, you know, food's like just in the refrigerator, you know, oh, you know, put some butter on the frying pan and put some bacon on there, you know. But for her, you know, she had to like, so, I mean, obviously, we live in a world like that, there are people like that, but. I don't know, I, I just think it's kind of cool when she just is so oblivious to this and just, I don't know. But anyway, I, I think, I, I want to review chapter 6 a little bit, but I won't. Stick to chapter 5. I'm not even sure if that happened chapter 5 or 6, but... um. So anyway, uh, it, it kind of happens in both, by the way, so it's not like, you know, it happens in one chapter and it does in the other. So let's go into the next thing. la 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 Scroll down, scroll down. Okay, so PETA. Right, so let me talk about PETA. And PETA, how he has a hard-on for Katniss, which surprises me. Um, you know, he kind of compliments Katniss. She, and um, he was like, you know, he suggested they hold hands. He, sh- he was like, oh, I think the stylist wants us to hold hands. Uh, yeah, sure, PETA. Sure, buddy. Sure, you know. I- I'm just kidding. It probably is. But, you know, I thought it was kind of cute. And I thought he was like, he, he was... Um, Katniss was like, oh shit, I'm holding his hand too much. And then he grabbed her even tighter and was like, you know, don't let go of me. You know, I'm scared kind of basically. And I thought that was kind of cool. You know, he actually was like not afraid to show him being weak around her. That's pretty cool. I like that. You know, she, you know, it's kind of weird that PETA, even though he knows that she would have to kill him, he kind of trusts her and he, he's willing to let a guard down for her or let his guard down for her. I think that's really nice. And I think that's really honest. And if it turns out he's just a sociopath, well that sucks, but you know what? I will s- I'm going to I'm going to ride on this character till the end. As gay as that sounds. Um so Yeah, that's Peter for you. Um And then he says like thanks for holding me. I was like, "Oh." Anyway, I'm going to stop being a little girl now. Uh let's uh move on to the next uh, thing I write down in my notes. Um, so we learned a bit about other districts and how they're famous for each thing. I kind of figured this, uh, district 12 is obviously for coal, district 11 is agriculture and district four is fishing. Um, district three is factories. So I'm sure there's other things too. I'm pretty sure district four might be near Florida or I guess Florida doesn't exist anymore in Panama. Um, but you know, according to the maps anyway, but anyway, it's probably down South. Let's see. Um, geez, what else did I learn? Yeah, you basically, like I said, you get food at the press of the button. Yeah, that wasn't this chapter, damn it. I knew it was. <sighs> I'm so right. Um, so these stylists, I, I, I should probably should have mentioned them first, but these stylists just crack me up. They're like the total gay, you know, Hollywood fashion things. It looks like she just X-copied, you know, the typical fashion person in Hollywood. Um, and and not saying gay as an actually homosexual, but you know what I mean, flamboyant, you know. I have nothing against gay people. And, you know, anyway, I could rant on about how just because you're gay doesn't mean you have to act like this. But I'm not. Um, so if, if you're sensitive and you're gay, well, you know, I question why you're watching my videos, but, you know, it's okay. Um, so <laughs> the names of these characters 
it's a stylist are just hilarious. Flavius, Octavia, Venya, Cena. I love the names. They're hilarious. Um, and I learned that they kind of have, you know, now I know what weird is, you know, because she said they look weird, you know. Uh, they have, like, blue hair, gold tattoos around the eyes and stuff, and that kind of thing. And I, I want to see more. I want to see that done in the movie, see what that looks like. But, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And the, the, this character, this one stylist, I really like. And, you know, even though he is a, a capital dude, you know, he's a capitalist pig, yeah, Cena. This guy is actually really cool, and I think because he's fucking apeshit crazy. Uh, and I don't really know for sure, but this is my guess anyway. So first, let me just hate on the author. She calls him normal looking. First of all, what is normal looking? What is normal? Normal to me is what, I, you know, freaking, you know, no clothes at all. You know, that's normal to me. But I guarantee you he was wearing clothes. So I don't know what normal looking is. I'm sorry. Um, what's her name? Suzanne freaking um, Collins. You know, I don't know what normal is. Why don't you explain? I mean, she did say he was wearing shorts and pants. But come, I mean, it's, I don't know. You know, like you got to be descriptive. You could say something like they didn't. he didn't look like them, whatever. I don't know. I'll give her a break on this one because I kind of, I mean, I don't really need to know too much. She did kind of describe but, I don't know. So, this guy is fucking apeshit crazy. And he's like the, the main head flamer for um, Katniss. And I think there's something about him. I think that he wants, the reason why, because he chose to do District 12 on purpose. And it's kind of said that stylists that go for District 12 are kind of like new. Or they, you know, they were sent to District 12 for punishment or some shit like that. But this guy chose District 12 on purpose. And I think, why is that? You know, all these other districts have this futuristic look and they have these styles and but District twelve is pretty much raw humanity. Without social structure. It's it has some social structure, you know, it runs like a town. But it's raw humanity. It's a dog eat dog world. People are not worried about looks, not worried about other shit. Their concern is food. So that's the raw humans. And I think that this guy chose District 12 to see people like that. Because if you think about it, he grew up in, a, in the capital, which is full of people that are full of, you know, craziness. I mean, I call it crazy, but for them it's normal. You know, they, they have this weird, you know, everything is like, you know, it was funny. The stylist actors say, now you look human when they dress them just like they do. And it's like, you know, it's kind of funny that you think about that because it's like, actually, they don't look human at all. They look like it's something else completely. So she looks more like a raw human being. And maybe that's why he wanted to see her. And that's kind of why he eyes her down and looks her up and down. You know, I think there's another motive besides just being a stylist and possibly has a boner for her. But, you know, I'm sure there's a bunch of pedophiles in here. Um, And then he says, like, really crazy things like, Katniss, I want to set you on fire. <laughs> I thought that was hysterical. I, he, well, those probably weren't exact words, but he said something like that. And he, he came up with the idea of setting them both on fire on their entrance to the Hugger Games. Now, it's not real fire, but it's basically it just looks exactly like it, and it burns on them. That's fucking awesome. Do you know how cool that would be to be on fire but not be burned? That's so awesome. I would love to do that. I, I, if they do that, I would, I, they have to do that in the movie. I want to see that. That would be really cool. So, that's oh, I can't wait to see that. Um... And I think that he actually um, may respect District 12 a little bit because he even said, you know, he was looking at Katniss like, you, you probably think we're all despicable. And he saw through that because he, you know, everyone else seems like that's just normal. Effie no thinks, oh, this is just normal. But he was like, you know what, you probably think we're despicable. And maybe a part of him thinks that they are too. So I think that's pretty cool. And I think he may even hate on the Capitol a little bit because, you know, like I said, he sees right through Katniss's hatred. And I think maybe he may play a part in like a revolution. You know, who knows? I'm not gonna, you know, not gonna draw any conclusions. But you know, it could be. Um, it's kind of funny that Katniss expected him to be like flamboyant and you know treat her like a piece of meat. <laughs> and if you think about it, <laughs> he's flamboyant. <laughs> okay, I'll stop now. Um, I thought it was funny. I mean, come on. Um. And he kind of did treat her like a piece of beef, thinking about it. But I can understand. He kind of respects her, maybe. 
And then there's Portia. I guess it's Peta's stylist. You don't really know much about this person. I don't even know if it's a boy or a girl. Um, so, I mean, lucky her. She got to see him naked. Oh, I'm so jelly. Uh, so, more about... And it's almost done. Actually, that's it. Wait, really? Oh, well, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that's it. Um, I think there was something else, but... Uh, yeah, that's basically my review. It was definitely a good chapter. Uh, a lot of excellent things to keep note of. Um, this chapter is actually kind of short. It's only 12 pages. But this next chapter looks like it's going to get intense. And by the way, we see some foreshadowing. The um, the other Hunger Games tributes were like I and Dem, Katniss and Peta. Like they were like, you know, pissed off. So I can already tell this is not looking so good. That's why I was kind of like, you know, maybe you shouldn't be so into the Hunger Games, you know. May kind of get some people on your bad side. I don't think you really want to do that. Anyway. Alright. That's it. I'm just going to awkwardly end it.